uh, computer. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so um, I'm talking with um, Dr. Gail Dickinson, and Gail, thank you so much for taking the time to talk with me tonight. Um, it sounds like you have company in the background there. Yes, that's the dogs. Okay, how many dogs do you have? Two. Okay. okay. <laughs> They're off screen, but you can hear them. <laughs> if not, I'll, you'll have to stop recording. I'll make them go downstairs. Okay. I'll tell them to lay down. Okay. Dogs, lay down. Ghost, down. Down. Well, Ghost will keep his head in my lap for a minute. Okay. All right. That was impressive. That was good. Okay. So, um, so tell me about how you're doing. So I'm, um, you know, kind of exploring what the pandemic is like for different people. So how, how are things going for you just like personally? Personally, it's going fine. I'm working. So there's no change in my income. Um, and I'm exercising a lot. I'm staying home so I can exercise more. I still have a lot of meetings all on zoom. Great. Um, but it's kind of nice not to have to be running out all the time. Yeah. 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 There is something about, you know, I think uh, for everyone, our schedules have obviously changed. And so there's just like fewer things on the calendar, mm -hmm. you know, fewer appointments to make. Right. Which is sort of nice, I guess. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, it was, it was very strange at the beginning because we didn't know what to expect at our hospital. Yeah. And it was like waiting for the tsunami to hit. Yeah. And it never did. And it never did. So, so what is that like? What is, what, what's life like at the hospital? Um, it's sometimes it's busy. Um, it's mostly not as many patients as we used to have because a lot of the elective surgeries aren't being done and things like that. Mm -hmm. But also people are coming in later. People don't want to come to the hospital. So, even though there's fewer patients, they're a lot sicker. You know, so somebody with a cellulitis, instead of coming into the ER, getting antibiotics and going home, waits until they're septic. Oh, okay. And, and, the ICU, you know? and that's because you think they're afraid to come into the hospital. I think so. That's probably one of the safest places around to be. And have you treated um, COVID patients? Yes. Definitely. And so when you go in, what do you have to do to prepare to go in to treat a patient? Um, if it's a COVID patient or someone who's being what we call a PUI, a person under investigation for COVID, we don't have the test results back. You, um, you put on a plastic gown, you take off your white coat, put on a plastic gown, um, put on gloves. There's an order you have to do all of this in cover your hair with a bouffant thing, um, then put on your mask and then put on um, your face shield. Wow. And does that make it more challenging to do what you need to do? Well, it just takes longer. Yeah. And every place I sit down to work, I use disinfecting wipes to clean everything around me. The phone I'm gonna dictate into, the computer keys, the mouse, the workspace um so everything that you touch you're disinfecting right you clean your hands all the time because if you touch a doorknob you don't know who touched it last right um and while everybody at the hospital seems to be really good with um hygiene and being careful i hate to depend on that right yeah so you have to be kind of hyper aware right of no. and you know you wear a mask the whole time you're there oh, okay. um, and what know, happens so to the mask afterwards so like if you go in to see someone you put all this material on and then you've treated them or talked to them and then you come out of the room and then you have to take all of that off in particular order so once you get the gown and the gloves off you hand sanitize again and then remove everything from the neck up with the mask coming off last you disinfect your face shield with the white 
the face shield and the mask go in a bag, a brown paper bag with your name on it. Okay. Everything else gets thrown out. Um, if the person's definitely a COVID patient, that face shield and mask stays in front of their room and you write a plus on it meaning a positive and it gets tossed out once the patient's discharged, but you use it over and over again. Oh, okay. For so that patient that, only. Okay, that mask yeah. for that patient. And then if you had another patient, you'd have another mask. Right. The ones that turn out to be negative, we can then reuse those bags that we have of stuff for another patient until we use it for a positive patient, and then it gets tossed. Okay. And then the surgical dogs enough. The surgical masks um, are you have to reuse and reuse until they're dirty or soiled. The ones and, that we wear not to go in a room that we're wearing all the time. And is that because there's a short? Is that unusual, or is that because there's yes, because okay. there's a shortage. We used to one use and they get thrown out. As some nurse said recently, it's like wearing medical waste into rooms. Okay. Because we used to just, if we wore them into one room, we'd throw them out. Yeah. And so you wear masks into every room now. Oh, and at every, it's on, unless you're in a private space, like the call room or the break room, it's on. What I do, because I'm a coffee addict, which you probably already know, is there's a dictating nook where I can close the door. It has a computer and a phone. So I adapt that as my workspace so I can take the mask off and drink my coffee. Nice, nice. Yeah, so is, are you finding it um, like very stressful? Because I mean, it sounds like there's an awful lot to have on your mind. I mean, it's stressful. Um, but it's just weird stress too because you're so geared up for what was supposed to happen and then thank god it didn't happen or not yet anyway but it's just it's a weird feeling yeah we have one or two meetings a week by webex on all the latest findings for covid so that we're up to date they're really not killing each other, they're playing. Okay. Yeah. I thought um, the walk would take care of this, but it just got them wound up. <laughs> so, um, and, and why, do you have a sense of why there hasn't been um, the tsunami that, you know, was being prepared for? Well, we're pretty rural, so that's a good thing. Um, I think this area, the people are just very engaged in doing everything right. You know, when I go to Soleil and Sons, there's a long line, but everybody's got at least six feet in front of them before they go to the next one, and everybody's wearing a mask. Mm -hmm. So people are taking it seriously. In this area, it seems to be. I mean, I'm sure there are exceptions, mm -hmm. but um, I've been really impressed. You know, the same thing, if you go to the creamery, it's a drive through now. Right, right. You know, I think people are being really careful. And I think that has in part protected us. Um, and we don't have a lot of people coming up, up from New York City here. Mm -hmm. You know, other parts of Connecticut that got really hit had a lot of New York residents. Right. Because that was sort of the nidus of infection that spread. Yeah. So do you have a sense of when... Um, things, not, not that things would go back to no, normal necessarily, whatever that is, but um, when like elective surgeries and like more patients will be coming into the hospital? I think they're talking about starting electric, elective surgeries now. They have to make sure they have enough PPE because elective surgeries use protective equipment too. Right. Right. Um, but I think it's going to be starting pretty soon. Mm -hmm. So as a doctor, is there something that you'd like people to know? Like, you know, like, do you have like a, a word to the wise for us? Well, just maintain, wash your hands, wear a mask when you're outside and stay distant. You know, I walk with friends all the time. 
I mean, tonight I walked by myself, um, but it's not uncommon for me to walk with neighbors. Mm -hmm. And we all stay six feet apart while we're walking. We're outside, so we don't wear masks because it gets, the droplets get diluted so quickly outside. Mm -hmm. And also if you're on, if it's, you're in the sun, the ultraviolet light kills the virus within minutes or less. Okay. All right. So even that's good to know, just like yep. that. So staying distant while you're outside, but knowing that um, kind of the wind and the air and the sunshine really help. If I'm someplace like West Thompson Dam, where I might get too close to people on the trail, I'll wear a mask. Mm -hmm. You know, or passing people on the trails and stuff. Mm -hmm. But being outside is good. And vitamin D seems to boost your immunity to the virus. So. Okay. Yeah, sunshine is good. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so that's good to know. All right. But and all the conventional advice is true. Right, right. So just keep on keeping on. Right. Check your temperature. If your temperature is above 100, call your doctor and see if you can get tested. Mm -hmm. Unless you have another reason. And watch out for ticks. Oh, I know. There's a lot of ticks right now. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. So if someone did want to or feel, felt like they needed to get tested, where, where, did, where do you go? I think Healingly Middle School on the weekends has a testing clinic. Mm -hmm. um, the emergency room, um, you come up outside and they decide if you need, need to be tested. You talk to them before you come in. And if they think that you need... Um, to come in and be examined by a doctor, you have to go through the decontamination room into a, a negative pressure room. Oh, interesting. Okay. You know, right. um, but I think the physician's offices are doing tests and sending them in as well, but they're doing them in the parking lots. So you're not coming in. Right. Right. And so would you say to people that are feeling sick or like you mentioned, particularly cellulitis, but other, you know, other concerns as well, you know, not to hesitate to go to the hospital? Yeah, yeah don't hesitate. I mean, I had a stroke that was five days old that came in because wow. the family called him and his words were slurred. Mm -hmm. You know, if he had come in within an hour, we could have disrupted the stroke and he wouldn't have had a permanent deficit. And he said, well, I didn't know if I should go to emergency rooms with all that's going on. Well, you should go for the emergency room for the same reasons you always went to the emergency room. Mm -hmm. You know, chest pain, stroke symptoms, a serious fever. I mean, cellulitis, if you can see your pri primary care doctor, that's even better. Um, but you should still go to the emergency room for all the reasons you used to. Mm -hmm. All right, that's good to know. And what I've been impressed with, I'm going to, plug Day Kimball Hospital is how prepared Day Kimball has gotten. Um, on one of the nursing wings, every room is now a negative pressure room. So what does that mean? I actually don't know what that is. That means if you open the door, air rushes in, it doesn't rush out. Okay. And so why the pressure inside that? the room is lower than the pressure outside the room. Mm -hmm. So the droplets stay in the room. Oh, okay. Oh, I see. Yep. No, but we used to have, I think, three of them because you use them for possible tuberculosis cases. Huh. But now they've turned the entire west wing of the hospital into negative pressure rooms. Wow. And all the ICU rooms are now negative pressure. We've got now 12 ventilators up from five. Nice. Um, so people are, really have tried their best to be ready. And we have a weekly meeting um, by WebEx on all the latest developments in COVID and some weeks too. Nice, I mean, that is so reassuring to hear that, you know, in our little corner of the state, in this quiet corner that, you know, there really is this high rate of preparation mm -hmm. and, um, you know, ready to respond to what, whatever the needs are. So, you know, I pray that we never have to have that kind of response, but right. it's reassuring that we can do it if we need to. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I want to thank you, first of all, for your um, hard work and your good work and really being like on the front line there. And, 
and uh, treating patients and kind of answering the call. Um, well, you know, being a pastor is a calling. Being a doctor is a calling, too. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. You know, a friend of mine said when this first happened, maybe you should retire now so you don't have to deal with it. And I said, no. <laughs> this would be the last time I would retire. You know, yeah. if I was planning to retire, I would have canceled it because this is what doctors do. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, I really get that, that you, you know, this is something that you can do and that you, yeah, that you are called to do. And so you're, you're kind of fulfilling, you are fulfilling your call. Yeah. Yeah. So thank you for your good work. Well, and, thank uh, you. And thank you for taking the time. Um, and good job calm, calming down the, the dogs. Um, <laughs> Ghost is laying on a rug next to me, staring at me, wondering what's going to happen next. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you so much okay. for taking the time to talk with me. Okay. Good, thank good you. To see you. Yep. Stay healthy. Thank you. All right. Bye-bye. Yep.